A very good evening to all our viewers and welcome to The Agenda. It's a brand new show here at Namibian Sun where we dissect news as it occurred in the week. I, I am the host, uh, Toivon Jabela, and uh, today I'm very excited to actually introduce the men that are making history with me on the debut of the show tonight. Uh, Joseph Kawandenga is the... Um, is the uh, uh, a member of uh, NUDO in the National Assembly. Uh, welcome to the show, sir. You are also the Secretary General of NUDO, yes. uh, just to, to put in context for the, for the viewers. Mm -hmm. And of course, the resident uh, commentator, uh, Kadenambo Kadenambo, is a former Minister of Youth. Uh, he's a SWAPO member. Uh, welcome to the show and thank you for joining us on our very first ever broadcast of the agenda. Thank you for making history. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you for having me here. Sure. So we have a number of topics to, uh, some ground to cover uh, tonight on the show. And um, I'm starting with um, Mr. Kawandenge um, regarding the events that occurred in Parliament uh, in recent days since SONA, the State of the Nation Address by President Hage Genkop. You were in the chambers on the day uh, of the SONA. And, um, you know, it was a civilized session until at some stage when we saw people being forcefully, forcefully removed out of the chambers and whatnot, uh, the members of uh, the Landless People's Movement to be specific. Uh, in that moment, what was going through your mind just seeing the scenes as we saw them? <laughs> well, for, for starters, um, yes, it is true that I was in the chamber. <laughs> Uh, but what came to my mind when this commotion started was the, 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 the fact that uh, are we turning now into a banana republic or what the hell is going on here? Yeah. That is what was really going through my mind mm. uh, at that point in time because I could not comprehend that in an independent Namibia 30 years down the road of our independence that we could actually come to that lowest point <clears throat> in our legislature. Did, did you think, <laughs> as someone who was present in the chambers yourself, did, did, did you think that um, the, the actions of uh, Honorable uh, Henny Sebeb and uh, Mr. Swartboy of LPM were maybe the last resort, like, you know, doing everything by all means necessary after perhaps pleading uh, through the usual, the established decorum of the house, or and therefore they reached the boiling point, or do you think it was just a an act, another act of hooliganism, if you like. No, I wouldn't uh, categorize it as hooliganism because, listen, when I stood up even in Parliament, I, I made it very clear that Article 32 of our Constitution, yeah. it's very clear as to when the President should come to the National Assembly and once he uh, deliver his State of the Nation address, he must be available for questions. Mm. So the, I, I thought that there was this thing on the part of the president that he's doing the legislature or the MPs a favor mm. to being there. The way the president was answering questions also gave rise to people getting agitated, actually, because mm. he did not answer questions, uh, co uh, not correctly, but straightforward, mm. as one would want him to answer. It's, it's like he was giving uh, the MPs maybe or doing them a favor, but it's a constitutional obligation that he must be there and he must be able or I'll be available for questions. Mm. And I think this also led to the members of the LPM to say, okay, if that is the way that you are going to answer us, then we are going to also make some noise here mm. because definitely uh, all of us, not only the LPM members, were not happy mm. with the way the president was uh, answering questions mm -hmm. that are very important uh, for the nation outside there. Now, Mr. Gazanambo, you must have followed. You are a businessman, and uh, I know that uh, on Sona you put yourself, you put your your fishing quarters and farming and property businesses on the side to follow this important event. Having been a member of parliament yourself uh, in the past, who was the hooligan in this in this case? Is it the MPs who behaved in the manner that they did, or the speaker who went to chuck them out of parliament and they are still? This a pending court case now, whether they will be allowed back in court or not, uh, in, in Parliament or not. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Um, uh, the, yes, I, I put everything aside that, that, that fateful day. Huh. 
and uh, I followed Sona right from the beginning, before the president arrived, until the president arrived, and I followed everything until to the end. I followed the comments mm. uh, of, of the public through the social media, uh, and uh, <coughs> um, when some when a, a colleague from the security political fraternity who are for following these things mm. asked me my take on what have just developed mm. in that in, in, in that fateful day very very sad indeed in the political architecture of our country mm. uh, my summing up of it it was that it looked like a battle of barbarians. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it yeah. looked like a typical battle of barbarians. Mm. No sophistication. <clears throat> you don't know who to blame. Mm. You don't know who to accuse. And you don't know how to arrive at accusing who. Mm. Because the whole manifestation, the body language, yeah the seriousness, the decorum of the house, from the allulating like a bar when the president was, was entering the place. Mm. You don't know who was competing who and what mood was being built mm. to the whole development of the whole thing. And the way the president was answering and whether he was the man who was thrown to swim mm. at, from the end of the of the river lonely. Yeah. He was not having a support system. He, whether it was a one man show, mm. you didn't know what is what. Because even if you can play that that that, that, that tape, mm. you know like uh, Honorable Kawandenge is saying, it started in a civil manner. Mm. But if you are a close observant you saw systematically the mood mm. changing. It was degenerating yeah. minute by minute, second by second, yeah. because the dialogue, you could see now the dialogue between the, the president and the, 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 the LPM, the, the LPM <coughs> cops mm. or uh, LPM group. Yeah. You could see there, and the speaker was trying to, to, to intervene with order, order, no dialogue. <laughs> and the way the president was responding, <laughs> it was also degenerating into a village type. You, you can follow it. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> it yeah. was a person who was pleading. Yeah, yeah. Uh, plead, uh, you can see, you can play the tape. <laughs> I, I, it was becoming the I, I. And there was no support system from, from anyway. Yeah. <laughs> the SOPO group was so senile. Mm. I, they were like just a student in a classroom. But, uh, let, me, but let, me, let me ask you that. Let me ask you this. <coughs> what, was this, did you see this thing coming? Given the fact that uh, since LPM came to parliament, we've seen similar scenes in the past, but maybe not just as extreme as the ones that we saw at Sona, but we've seen jackets being ripped off by people throwing them on a desk and inviting people to fist fights. You, you can only do that for so long. Mm. At some stage, people will stand up and say, but okay, now fight me now. Uh, but, but definitely the president is not, is not, is not part of those who have been... <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, sizing up to each other yeah. uh, in mm. parliament mm. and that's why i'm saying that the decorum of the house should when there is a man a head of state who mm. is there to deliver sona mm. he's not a member of parliament mm -hmm. he just come to parliament by invitation yes the decorum of the house yeah. must reflect yeah. then the mood must be built <coughs> for that occasion mm. And I'm saying the mood that was 
prevail in the house was like of a bar. From the time the president was arriving, yes. the alulation, the everything, it but was so childish immaturity. But that is what it you, was building a mood. But that is what you guys did in parliament. You always clapped hands and no, 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 no. Let, let us give the let, let, let us uh, let us give the seriousness yes. of the, of this of this of, the, of this discussion. Yes. The men I deserve, and, and let us analyze things objectively. Yes. And the reason I say that for me it was a battle of the barriers, hmm. a barriers from all sides, hmm. because the mood, the behavior, the environment from both sides, yes. SWAPO, LPM, whoever, it was not a mood for the occasion. Yeah. The, the, it was lowered right from the beginning, and that lowering, it, it, it went throughout yeah. the event. And yeah. you know, these things have got serious, serious uh, consequences for our country, beyond what me and you, the three of us, are sitting here. Mm. And uh, Honorable Kawandenge have said that th that day, reduced our country to a banana, a banana republic. Mm. Who would you love to, who would love to live in a banana republic? Yes. These things, these yeah. happening yeah. have got serious consequences yes. from our economic growth environment, mm -hmm. from, uh, it, it cuts across our political, social, and economic environment. The events like the one that took place. Mm. So it's not a question where you reduce it to LPM and SOAPO and the individual and the president yeah. and hand clappers. We need to give the seriousness of this analysis. Yes. How did it deserve? Because the, the whole situation that transpired there, it, the world is watching us. We don't live in an isolation. Yes. The whole, there are people who are investing billions in this country, millions in this country, and it affects the what is happening in parliament or our political interactions, they affect people, ordinary people in the street. Mm. Because <coughs> the whole, what has happened now, yeah. it, 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 first in Namibia from 1990, if you go, if you, if you go, if you, if you can check in the internet now, as we are talking now, mm. from 2014 to 2019 to last year, mm. The global political risk indices or indicators, we are a country that has been downgraded. Mm. We have been downgraded. The political indicators at the global level. Our political risk, yeah. our political risk is increasing. Okay. We, are, we are becoming a risky, political risky country. Yeah. Therefore, what happened at SONA? Yeah. It is not helping us. It is adding to, to, those, yeah. to us being perceived by investors, by other political serious players, that we are a country on a political decline. I'll stop you there, Mr. Kandanamo, for a minute. Um, the last uh, question on this subject uh, goes to you, uh, Mr. Kawandenge, and that is, um, do we, the, that particular incident in your analysis, is it an isolated flash in the pen kind of incident or is this a beginning of a generation that will stand up to swapo leaders in parliament i mean you, you are in the current par parliament for the first time but your predecessors in that in that space of the opposition they have uh, they've been bullied they've been told to shut up they've been told to never speak to the speaker or certain government leaders in a particular manner do you think this is a generation that says now we are no longer going to listen to that kind of instructions and uh, if you don't listen to us this is how we are going to do things yeah no de definitely but i would love to, to to disagree a little bit with uh, honorable kaden number the way he alluded to the fact that uh, when the parliament started on that day both sides from the opposition and the ruling party were somehow you know in that mood of misbehaving and the way he no, no, I didn't say that. You know, but I, I, I must put it on record that the opposition benches, when the president walked in, we all stood up. We gave him the respect that he deserved. Mm -hmm. The side of the Swapo party, they were going on with their ulitations and what have you. And, and they set the stage actually for saying we are in control. Yeah. That is how I interpreted it mm -hmm. when the president walked in. Yes. However, 
Namibians must also take into account and ask themselves, what is the purpose of a parliamentary system? Why are we in parliament? What are we supposed to be doing there? Mm. We cannot be in parliament and become nuns. Yes. Obviously not. Yes. Parliament is a place where there must be robust discussions, disagreement, factually on issues that affect the people of this country. Mm. Now, to your question, it is true that in the past, those that were there were bullied. And, and that, is a, that, that is a truth. A Swapo minister will stand up from uh, this side of the aisle and, and, and just say, shut up, you kufuts and whatever, to the members of the opposition. Mm. It, it was a norm mm. in the past. But the new generation that is in parliament are saying, no, we have had enough with your liberation struggle. Yes, we pay attention and homage to those that fought for the liberation struggle of this country, yeah. but we now are busy with economic emancipation that we have to fight for. Yeah. So it, it's a whole ball game yeah. where current members of parliament will take Swapo on, and the ruling party does not like that because they are not used to that. Yeah. They, they, they are used to being comfortable in their seats and dictating their agenda and calling opposition members names and what 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 not mm. but i must say the house is generating to the extent it is because the speaker does not have the moral or the muscle and the political muscle to call his wapo comrades to order when they are also out of order mm. because you will see he will always go to the opposition but when the minister stood up and and, and and say a word he always did not hear it i don't know whether his ears only hear this side of the opposition, but on the side of the ruling party, he does not hear. Mm -hmm. So yes, we, parliament will continue to be robust. Yes. Parliament will continue and members from the opposition will hold the Swapo party accountable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the unfortunate thing is that the Swapo MPs that are in parliament today are dead woods to say the least. If you see the combination of the Swapo MPs in Parliament today, many of them cannot compete intellectually and otherwise at par with most members of the opposition. Mm -hmm. And this is where the problem is. That's where you are told now we are disrespecting these youngsters that came in, don't have manners and whatnot. But it's the parliamentary system throughout the world. Mm -hmm. You must see the House of Commons in, in, in the UK how they are debating. Sometimes you, you will wonder, are they fighting or are they debating issues? The Prime Minister is be taken to task. Yes. In South Africa, uh, Cyril Amaphosa, when he comes to Parliament, he's taken to task. Mm. You know, whatever. But here in Namibia, we must be nuns in the Parliament and, and behave as such. Indeed. I have three minutes before we go on a break. Uh, so I want you to respond uh, just quickly for that remaining moment, uh, Mr. Kadenambo. Is your party losing uh, to the opposition in parliament? Are you guys trailing now? It's very, it's very subjective uh, for you to say my party. Swapo is not members of parliament. In Swapo, those are some in in that in that parliament. They are great brains, intellectually uh, guys who are well. Ladies and men and women who are well trained, academically, intellectually, astute, and so on, who can stand up to any challenge. They can challenge Honorable Kawandenge intellectually. He knows it very well. Yeah. But I'll agree <laughs> with him that yeah. there will be some members of our party yeah. who may be having some deficiency academic deficiency or intellectual deficiency, just like it's the same also in any other political party there. We are not in that parliament for intellectual contestation. Yeah. We are there to address issue. And uh, you cannot generalize SWAPO. Let us distinguish individuals from SWAPO. SWAPO and individuals. The things of bashing everything, if you are talking about corruption in SWAPO, when you are talking about uh, like in individuals that are not intellectually aptitude, you swap or no, yeah. it's really a uh, way of manipulating facts and yeah. to try to steal the show in a very, very <laughs> unprofessional way. I will leave, uh, yeah, I will so Swapa is doing well, and but let, let us not deviate from this topic uh, unless if, you, if I have to come to 
back to... to yeah, yeah, finish your point quickly. My point is that, yeah. colleagues, <clears throat> what has happened in Parliament, was it last week? Yes. It's regrettable, and we all need to go back to the drawing tables. All. Yeah. And, and see how really serious do we take our parliament. And I have not blamed the opposition. I was saying that the mood which was being built, mostly by my colleagues, for, by allulating. I don't know who were they competing with. That was not a swap, a swap meeting. Yes. It was not a swap. The, Gengobi has been already elected. He doesn't need to be allocated at parliament because by allulating you are irritating other people and this is your day yeah. this is the day for your president you're already setting up the mood so yeah. things like this are not good but also they are reflective in our country the level of our political risk and yeah. what happened security invading parliament and kashavi is just jumping hastily dismissing parliament this things tells you that either swapo it's a party under siege or a parliament. We, we are doing what is called in strategy studies. What you are seeing is moral panic. We'll leave it there for, for a moment. We are going for a short break. Uh, this is uh, the agenda. This is the agenda. I am joined in the studio by uh, Kadenambo Kadenambo and Joseph Kawandenge. Uh, uh, Joseph, of course, is the current member of parliament uh, on the ticket of Nudo. Uh, Kadenambo Kadenambo was uh, a member of SWAP in parliament also uh, some years ago, but something happened. Um, I just, Joseph is, is, is the secretary general of, of, a, of a political party and uh, you know, people talk about, let's talk about succession politics. Um, why is it that um, every time there's contestation in our internal, uh, internal contestation in the political parties, that somehow there's always um, a fallout? So bad that in your party, you actually expelled Betaruhe Kandorodhu. <laughs> is it a question of leaders not wanting to be challenged at all? I think it has to do... <laughs> with the mental setup of Africans, we as Africans in terms of how do we view politics. Mm. In the Western world, politics for them, it's not a means to an end. It's, it's not an employment. It's, it's a calling for service. Mm. Mm. Now, unfortunately, in an African context, politics for many of our people is a means to an end. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's a ticket to the meal. It's, it's when I'm there, uh, then the, 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 the dinner table, it's laid out for me and only me. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, when it is time for a succession, and many of them as leaders, we don't think about that even. Yes. We don't think that tomorrow or after two terms or three terms, I must vacate this office mm. or space. Mm. We, 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 we align ourselves so much with... I'm there, and anybody that comes and wants to challenge me must be silenced at all costs. Mm. Um, in the past, uh, you will see people been killed. Uh, what happened to Patrice Lumumba? Mm. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, 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 and other 
African leaders for that matter, mm. that they were being killed by their own kith and kind and people that were close to them. Mm. And this is the problem that we are having in the Namibian political setup. Indeed. Because we don't prepare yeah. for the time when we say, uh, let me bring this young man here next to me, let me mold him the day when I'm not there, that this person should take over. That is the problem we are having. Now, Mr. Gadenambo, you are on the you are on the fringes of your own party. You are not um, a central committee member anymore. Of course, you don't have a birthright to remain a central committee member for for the rest of your life. But but um, it's also your your fate had a lot to do with uh, internal contestation in the party. Also, why is it difficult? Why is it not allowed somehow that uh, to differ? with the leadership of the party in terms of the choices of candidates that you, you want? Uh, it, uh, this whole thing has got to do with uh, our political architecture, our, the way we do politics in Africa, and uh, uh, I have to agree with uh, what uh, the Honorable Kawandenge has said. Maybe we'll agree a lot today. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but these are serious. Again, also, when we are discussing these things, let us elevate them to the impact, the, the consequences of what they are causing, mm. because all they are adding up to political instability, and political instability is not good yeah. for any country. The politics of the belly, which is a mere consideration, for many people. Mm. When people they are participating, even the battle in the parliament now, it is not about policy. You can see that it has got nothing to do with policy. It has got something to do with political survival. Mm. That's why people have got nothing to do with <laughs> rules and policy. Is to, they want to be seen to trample the laws and the rules and the policy, mm. the very same attitude and mindset is the one that causes problems. Mm. Because people are divided in the camp, always, and it's not a camp that I'm going to serve, I'm going to stand for this policy, is the, is the competition to push one another to be the next, well, at all cost, through who can crook, mm. be it through corruption, bribing votes or through bullying, through intimidation, and so on. And this thing creates tension, and there is no peace, uh, there is no peace, and there is no consistency that, no, yesterday we did it this way, tomorrow we must do it this way, and we must stick to the way we did. Like, for an example, you see what is happening in Parliament? It's exactly what has happened in my party. <coughs> What has happened internally into my party now is spilling over to the national politics. And it's a cut, and also international, because the way you see the succession tension in Swapo, you will see it in DTA, in PDM, sorry, you will see it in Nudo, you will see it even soon, you will see it in LPM. Mm -hmm. IPC is already uh, there. Uh, so it's a culture that the consideration is not to go and serve. Because politics, it's an employment agency now for many people. Mm. So it's competition. So, now, because for example, in my party, as we are talking now, you know, last year, 2017, they were talking about the very same gang of group were talking about the slate politics. Now, it's another slate that they are contemplating. Those who were together, Nudo had a slate. Nudo had got a slate, had a slate. Many of these political parties, it's a slate, it's not even a slate for either sustaining party policy or ideology. It's a slate, give me those that I want to eat with mm. at the moment. Mm. Now you see, uh, when Swapo was uh, weakened last time, because definitely it has brought division. And because the consideration is eating, yes. people, they don't know even, they don't realize that, my friend, we are fighting to protect this plate, but this plate is empty. They still gather around that plate, even some are coming to that plate. Because yes. now, even in Swapo, 
They are no longer talk, sustaining their slate of last Congress. They are now divided with many slates. So comes next year, Gengob will introduce another slate. Yes. That's the confusion that you are having. And the yes. very people who are, it's the former Mbungu, as you can they are just like wolves. <laughs> Although Mbungu didn't tell you that. Today, you know, the, 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 the wolves yeah. survived that specific kill. And whether they will end up eating one another, <laughs> they, 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 they don't have any culture. So the thing is that, let us be decent in this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Let us protect our party. Let us not concentrate on the plate, yes. whether the plate is what. Let us be influenced by ideological consideration, yes. by policy, by issues, not who is going to be in the power. Because I'm telling you, currently what is going to swap internally, those who are together at the last slate, they are no longer together. They are killing one another. The, even you can go to Nudo. I stop it there. Those who are together at the last slate, <laughs> they are no longer together. Some are locking offices. The same in, with PDM. Those who are together, they are now in the court taking one together. <laughs> so you tell you, this can prove that the consideration here is not about policy. It's about eating. But and I mean, at this eating, yeah, they yeah. can assassinate one another. And that's what I'm going to show you. What we saw there in Parliament last week, these are symptoms of instability. What will follow? Yeah. It's physical elimination. In this country, people will start being associated. Poisoned, killed, mark my words. Yeah. Because that's the only option that is left for the survival, for the battle of the plate. I hear you. Um, so... What plate were you targeting when you when you guys had a, a slate of your own in Nuda? You you ran alongside uh, Esther Mwinyangwe. You of course you won, and immediately after you guys won, mm. like I stated earlier, uh, Vetaru Hega Kandrozu, who ran against Esther Mwinyangwe, was hounded out of the party, and um, the, there was even an attempt to remove your members of parliament uh, that were there uh, before Congress. Um, what, what, what damage or, 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 how can I put it? My English is gone. What damage or the opposite of that has succession polit uh, politics uh, do to your party uh, since that Congress? Sure. Well, it, it did a lot of damage. It yeah. did a lot of damage uh, that we are still reeling from as we speak now. And, and unfortunately... Um, I don't know why sometimes we, the smaller political party, and when I say smaller political parties, I'm not mentioning to say in terms of the name because NUTO was started, was started in 1964 in terms of size. Why do we copy often what is happening in the bigger parties? Parties like NUTO and all these smaller parties has no place for slave politics mm. because the moment how few you are, the moment when you are divided, it, it, it has dire consequences for the party mm. but for pickup uh, parties like swapo or others perhaps they can manage it in terms of what they can give this one or that one in terms of resources that they are having mm. so for us it, it was a learning curve really mm. that going forward we must try by all means to avoid slate politics at yeah. all cost yeah, yeah. so that at least we can rally but it will be difficult of course because at the end of the day as we have said everybody wants to come on the dinner table and eat yes and if i'm not eating then i will turn the table around so that nobody can eat <laughs> yes. you know and, and that is pre precisely the the, the 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 mental state of many of our uh, people yes. not only in Uto, but across the the, the spectrum of, yes. of, of politics yeah. and and for us uh, the question that you asked it really was a learning curve uh that perhaps in 2024 we must try by all means as leaders to make sure that we don't go back there because yeah. it still today those slates once you have slates in the party they don't die yeah they just reinvent themselves into more slates mm. those that were together today tomorrow they are no more together and those that went there they will start another slate mm. and then it continues it continues yeah. so it is really something that to, to be avoided at all cost now, while I have you, uh, while, I, while I'm still talking to you, how, how safe is the position of Esther Munyangu? Because we are seeing petitions being written. Um, some seem to be disillusioned about the fact that uh, she has accepted an appointment of a minister, um, this, as deputy minister by the Swapo president. Uh, and some see it as simply a case of people not want, wanting to be led by a woman. 
How safe is she in, in that position? Well, for starters, those that are really against the position within NUTO and the broader Namibian society, I must call them hypocrites, to say the least. Mm. Because it is the very same society of Namibians that have been calling for Swapo and telling Swapo that Swapo party is selfish. Mm. That if the president have to appoint any minister, the constitution is very clear that he must choose from the members of the National Assembly mm. with, uh, with the exception of the six or whatever that he is nominating. Now, the Namibian society was all along saying Swapo is selfish, the president is selfish, that they cannot take from the brain from the opposition because we have people that are capable in a position that can actually contribute to the well-being of Namibia. Yeah. Now, when the president does that, some of us then again stand up and say, no, why must he do that? Or why did he do that? Because that woman is not a, a member of the Swapo party and, 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 and. Mm. But the question is, why were we calling for that to happen? Yeah. Now, the, some of the people that were at the forefront of attacking my president were the people that when parliament resumed, last year in march they put in another name uh for the uh, position of the speaker in parliament that name came from the opposition why because the argument was that swapo cannot have a speaker from the from the swapo party and a deputy speaker from the swapo party we must share mm. now is it only sharing when it is other parties but it's not sharing when it comes to nuto mm. you know so it for me it really does not make any sense but yes the question that she is a woman yeah. and the party is male dominated, it, it also has its own challenges as well. Mm. Uh, because yes, she managed to be elected into that position, mm -hmm. but I don't think as, 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 as many men in the party, we have really accepted that a woman can lead. Yes. And, and that is also a challenge, but also there are third forces outside NUTO that wants to make sure that she lose that position at all cost yeah. because of their own vested interest as well. And the third forces, we know what, what uh, third forces they are okay. for obvious reasons that she cannot be there. But the third forces is because some people were handing to become uh, prime ministers and ministers in the government and they did not get that opportunity. Mm. And because of this male chauvinism, of saying a woman cannot be there and I'm here outside, it's also playing a role. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I can currently use is safe. Because yes. those of us that, in, uh, that believe in women empowerment mm -hmm. will fight with her to the last breath so that she can remain there and finish her term. And whoever wants to come and take NUTO in 2024 must do his or her homework and come to Congress. It, we cannot have a coup d'etat in, in the middle of her term just because she accepted the position uh, as, as deputy minister in the government, but because at the end of the day, she's saving the whole Namibia. Mm. She's not been paid with Swapo money. She's paid with Namibian tax mayor money. And every teacher, every police officer that belongs to NUTO today, yeah. they are in the same government working. Are they also bought by Swapo? <laughs> That's a fair question. Chief, your the the what, what was your take on um, on, on, on the appointment of uh, Esther Mwenyangwe, especially coming from a party that has so much entitlement, people thinking that, no, we were campaigning there, but we are being overlooked, we were in this camp, but we, are over, we were overlooked. When you heard that Esther Mwenyangwe was going to be uh, made a deputy minister, what was your, what was your take? I, I welcomed it, and uh, I deeply congratulate, I congratulate the president and uh, both President and Mwenyangwe, president for appointing um, Mwenyangwe from, from Nudo mm. and Mwenyangwe accepting this responsibility because let's move away from the politics of belly, of the belly and opportunism here, mm. of seeing things selectively. When things are in our interest, they are okay. When they are done in the interest of the wider society, but at an individual level when you are not beneficiary, then we throw dust on the whole thing. Mm. So this, I think, for nation building, this was, you welcome it. Yeah. 
And by the way, it is not for the first time that is happening in the history of this country. Yes. For an example, when we, when we, at independence, people like uh, Dirhat, mm -hmm. uh, is it Dirhat, yeah? Mm -hmm. when, he was, when he was appointed deputy minister of youth, mm -hmm. he, was, he, he was on the ticket of UDF, mm -hmm. if I recollect very well. By the same time, when advocate Vekwi Rukoro was appointed deputy minister of justice, he was sworn of president. And um, and uh, late Yariot may so rest in peace when he was appointed ombudsman, mm -hmm. first ombudsman of the Republic of Namibia. He was member of DTA. Mm -hmm. So the list goes on and on and on. So this scenario is not the first one to the, to, to happen. So it's it's it's, it's a legal what, 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 what has it done to national cohesion. Do, do you want us to return back to that kind of politics where we look beyond political loyalty and really put people, because the 1990 thing was uh, quite nice to have all those, uh, that, that vari variation. It, it is something that... Or will, it, or, will it destroy or will it destroy ruling parties if they start taking people from other sides? Briefly. It can be said it, it will destroy both the opposition, like the argument that is being advanced now, uh, by even some of those who benefited from this uh, scenario. Mm -hmm. So it will not, it's, it's a good way of nation building. It doesn't destroy anything. It is adding up, it is strengthening. Mm -hmm. You know, division is a sign of weakness. Like the saying says that divided we fall, united we stand. Mm -hmm. Anything that is dividing, whether it's that's why we had a problem with slight polo, slate politics because it's a, it's a recipe for division and it's not sustainable. Anything that is united, we may have differences, yeah. and we have got our ideological differences, our cultural diversity, and so on. But the intention, the main goal, is to build a one Namibia, one nation. So if people are coming from different political background, and they are not going expected to become swapo members. Yes, yes. No, they are expected. In fact, if there is somebody who is critical in this country politically, I, need, I, I consider myself more critical, sometimes unreasonable, than members of the opposition. So I can be considered an opposition within, but does this help my party or does it minus from my party? Yes. But if you have got yes people, yes men, you get what it was in your, in your house, sometimes you need to have people that are telling you that you are wrong. Yes. You are going in the wrong direction. So yes. I'm not afraid of the opposition being part of the government. Yes. They may remain who they are and they are who they are, but we all belong to this country. I stop we you. must contribute. I see it in that light. I stop you there for a minute, yes. uh, Mr. Gadenambo. We are going for a quick break, and when we return, we will talk about the cabinet reshuffle that took place uh, the past week. Come back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, <clears throat> we continue with the agenda, and uh, the next item really now is uh, in, the, in the final part of the show is to talk about the success, uh, the, res the cabinet reshuffle. 
let's talk about give me your view uh, joseph uh, about what, what is your overall take especially the all important appointment of Franz Kapofi as defense minister well i for my side it was a total disappointment uh, really i must say the president of this country has run off ideas um, seriously president hake kainkop appointments of late is a total disaster as far as i'm concerned because on one hand he's trying his level best to keep those people that are that are close to him still in their positions and reshuffle them from one end to the next mm. however franz kapofi was in how many portfolio if one can count as as as, as a minister what really did he do that set him apart today to become a, a defense minister? The, the same with the whole appointments. It's, it's, it's a thing of recycling the old, uh, is it old wine in new bottles? And it does not really add any value mm. to the whole issue of, 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 of administration, to the whole issue of accountability and what have you and what have you not. Mm. Remember that when President Hake Kainkop took over, he went to the extent of saying that these ministers must uh, sign performance, wh whatever uh, that he was saying, they must bring in their CVs and whatnot. Everything that the president does or say lacks implementation at the end of the day. Mm. So for me, this appointment is a total disaster. Uh, the president brought in a young person of the 22 years old, and, and but then you ask yourself, what will this person do when she is in parliament? Those that were appointed as young people that are in parliament today on the tickets of Swapo as bank benchers, what are they doing? What are they are contributing? So it's, it's more of a fashion show, a fashion statement hmm. uh, for her because I don't think she will be able to contribute anything in, in, in the setup of the Swapo party currently as they are in, in, in parliament. She's a very strong. Uh, youth leader well uh, so, and so and other places so, so was uh, so did we thought about emma teofeles as a deputy minister what is wrong with emma what does he do now what 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 substantive or concrete proposals or articulations of ideas does the, the she bring in parliament unfortunately and i must say this swapo is killing youth and young people brains in that parliament because they are taking young people from the streets and bring them into parliament. But then when they are in parliament, then they must do the line. They, they, there is a hierarchy of what can you say and what can you not say and when can you not say it. The ministers must be the one to say this and what not. This we are saying that these young people are brought in there, but they, 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 they cannot be themselves. They, they cannot really speak out their mind as bank benches in that parliament. So it's a mockery of fashion statements outside there without any concrete or substance when these people are in parliament so for me uh, this appointment really it's, it's it's a total disaster as far as i'm concerned uh, you have Derek Klassen from uh, ministry of what um, fisheries uh, now the minister of fisheries mm -hmm. yes he's on record to have said he uh, uh, resigned from wish wish and wash uh, what company uh, that he was having uh, interest in in the fishing in the, uh, sector. You have Okawana, I mean, for God's sake. Why are there no Namibians with fresh ideas mm. who can really contribute, young for that matter, who can really contribute meaningfully to the development of this country? You mm -hmm. have the Minister of Youth and Sport, I mean, for God's sake, 76 or 70, not that I have anything against her. Yes. But in that portfolio, you need a young person yeah. that can relate to other young people and do and bring some more energy to that. So, uh, I don't know. For me, it was just a disappointment. You're not impressed? No, I'm not impressed. What was your impression, Mr. Kazenambo? And when you were a, a, a senior minister in, in, uh, in parliament, did you enjoy some sort of preference over your younger party members in terms of... Because Joseph is making a very serious allegation that uh, somehow uh, young people they are controlled they, they will be vibrant before they enter parliament but once they enter the house the likes of yourselves who are ministers and other central committee members for example 
were given would be given preference to speak and make everybody else whip whip everyone else in in, in line. Let, let me be. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me first of of all remind the public outside there of viewers that uh, I'm very very conflicted when it comes to this issue of handling. Because Swaba is a divided party at the moment, whether you like it or not. It's a divided party at the moment, and it's, it's even fracturing further. Uh, so it's a sad situation. I wouldn't like to fight to see the state in which my party is under. Because now you are talking, we are talking about my colleagues here. My colleagues, but the environment, it, it, I don't. I know some of them will consider me as their comrade, as their colleague. But the environment that is being created in this country, it, it's so complex that the the leader Gengob himself is not here for unity. He's here for division and further division and division. So when I'll talk here, I'm talking about facts on the ground, not something that I'm smelling. That's why I'm saying that this thing is even spilling over at a national level because Swapo is far from uniting itself because even people, when they call uh, for reconciliation so that we can talk these things, without, you have got a man who doesn't sit and reflect and say that, am I going into a direction that is strengthening me or it's weakening me? So I'm discussing this under that background. Mm -hmm. You are discussing, and it's very, very, I'm in a difficult situation because I'll end up talking about individuals, some of them that I don't know, even their history, I've never heard them about them in the circles of politics, yeah. and I don't know the motives why they are being appointed, a and the environment for individuals in the party, it, it now has been portrayed as it, it's an environment in Swapo. So having said that, you know, our situation was very, very difficult, different from the current Swapo. Because in Swapo you had robust debate. Robust debate in various structures of the party, even in that parliament. And this has been a culture of Swapo. When Swapo comrades meet, you see what you are seeing there in Swapo, the, 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 the Sabeb and the Vet Boy, I mean the Swapo, the way they are behaving, is the very same culture of Swapo of how people debate. Because you debate robustly, you, you disagree, you fight, but at the end of the day, you know what you are fighting for. After you resolve, after you have chest out, then you agree. Now, people, that's why the support system is even collapsing, because you can see that those poor ministers, they are like kids in the classroom watching their president being marauded there because they don't know what to say and not what to say. When to come in, they are just like in a church. A pastor is just uh, <laughs> preaching. You don't know when to say whether what you are saying is satanic or will be viewed as satanic or godish. Mm -hmm. You don't know. So this is a situation in Swap at the moment. People are so scared to the bone. The, the beauty thing is just to clap hands to praise the leader. That's why even you can, you can ask what rules are being used to, to certain action. Because people have to satisfy the leader to the bone. And now you don't know the background of these people, whether they are brought there for a succession, next succession they are being rewarded, or they are being, reward, they are being lined up to, to go and be positioned but for when, the next round. But when you were appointed, was, was, were you lined up yourself for, for succession? It, it, it's a good question, but I said that the environment was different. Swap internal environment was very, very difficult. It was, it was very different. Hmm. I contested. There was no way I was wheelchaired in any position. I participated in contestation and open and fair contestation where there, where there were no allegations of bribes where there were no allegations. Today we are dealing with the allegations of bribes that Congress was bribed. I don't want to delve into that because I'm a Democrat. I have I accepted the outcome. Mm -hmm. But the current leadership, is be they are behaving like thieves. They are, you can see they are certain, some of them, not all of them, mm -hmm. because, and that's why the wolf behavior, 
The cabinet itself is a nomadic cabinet. It's a nomadic cabinet, very nomadic indeed, because how many ministers in the history of Swapo take how many ministers have lost their positions in this government? How many reshuffles have been done in this government? At parliament, the reshuffles are there. The Patrina and Gura were kicked out of the middle of nowhere. The Penduken were kicked and so on. It came to the Ngarusebi, they were kicked. The, the Dr. Haufiku were picked, were kicked. You don't know, the list goes on and go on for various reasons. So it's a nomadic cabinet. Today, you are, and that's why you don't get surprised when those people are, are scared mm. to their bone. Today, you are a minister, tomorrow, you are in the street. <laughs> <laughs> Today you are a member of parliament. Tomorrow, when the mood of the of the leader is not in good, he is not in good mood, you are pushed out. So it's a nomadic cabinet. So it's a nomadic swap that you are doing. It's yeah. a rule of the jungle. You don't know who is responsible. So now, how do I comment about a nomadic cabinet? You don't know who. Even even those who are in positions. Yeah. I'm sure if you can corner the secretary general, she will confess to you that I don't know how that lady, where she's coming from. Or even if you can confront the VP or one of the top leaders. So you don't know who is consulting who, who is pushing who, why is what, what, and the people are so scared of corruption. I can tell you the nomadic cabinet that we are having. And you know, it's, a, it's sort of uncertainty that is engulfing this party. And it's not only engulfing this party, now it's spilling over to the whole country because assassinations will fall. You don't know even what rules are being used for security to step in, bodyguards to step in parliament. It's a rule of the jungle. Everybody's contesting to make sure that he's pleasing the leader. It doesn't matter whether the person is trampling on the rule, he is exposing themselves. So in the end, where the rules are not clear, there are no guidelines, it's mm. the rule of the jungle. The it's wolf, jungle. it's dog, eat dog. So yeah. really for me to comment about the cabinet, the cabinet um, I'll talk about Kawana just few months was the Ministry of Fisheries. Today is the home affairs. You don't know what is going to be a minister the next day, which ministry. The whole thing is crisis management at, at all levels. Mm. You don't know who is doing what, who is consulting who, at all levels. It's crisis management, yeah. and I don't know the situation. So really, I'll it's very, very difficult. My, co my point is that really the nomadic cabinet, I don't know where it's going to end, who is going to be where, until when is going to be there. Yes, you see, I, 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 I was removed or I removed myself from cabinet, but we had consultations with President Pohamba. Hmm. Consultations, we met at his farm near Otavi, and others were lobbying for me to go, and I was lobbying myself to go. And therefore today, today when we meet with Pohamba, there is no quarrels, because if I can say, President Pohamba, you fired me. <laughs> President Pohamba, you say, number, don't, don't, don't play with me, don't irritate me, because you are demanding to go. Nobody actually knows to who, what happened, <laughs> but, some of these colleagues in this nomadic cabinet, eh? you, you are just called. Eh? Either the president has got no guts, he's a weak president, because he display all the signs which President Gengob display. And you never know a human being until he starts acting. All the actions that he is displaying, the, the actions of bullying, the actions of uncertainty, it shows these are reflections, the actions of a weak person. Either a person with low self-esteem, or a person who has got no complex, or and people who are, or a person who has been abused in his life, yeah. either through the leadership experiences or so on, but definitely something, some, something is wrong. Not only politically, yeah. because it, now it's a situation of abuse, of abuse of power. People are so scared. There is no policy direction. People are, it's a question of uncertainty. I don't know whether it's a corruption that is haunting these people. They are protecting their corruption. They are scared that something is going to happen to them when they're in the future. They are behaving like wolves. I'm telling you, fighting over <laughs> a, a carcass. You've so made, really, a, a nomadic cabinet like this one, yeah. where you don't know where, because I can give you an example. Quick one example, close one. You see, during that, in the 90s, 
Minister Shiriangi and Minister Lady Thete, may their soul rest in peace. They were implicated in the ostrich uh, thing in the Nonganjira day. Yeah. But these people remained in cabinet. President Sam Nyoma told them to defend their case and so on. At one point, President, Deputy Minister Ithete was suspended while the thing it's invest, is being investigated. There are many permanent secretaries that were suspended in the 90s and the 2000s while their cases were investigated. Mm -hmm. And some, were, some of them, they were cleared their names later and so on. Here today, when somebody said, who is implicated in the corruption? Yeah. Come and defend your case or you are gone. This is a sign of crisis management. There is no orderliness. There is no procedure. So you don't know who is going when and with what. And you don't know why these people are appointed, what criteria are being used. Yeah. And many of them are angry amongst one another if they are not hypocrites. Even those who are in Swapo. If you talk to Swapo Youth League members today, yeah. Yeah. they are so disappointed. They will tell you behind what they know. We don't know where this lady is coming from. We don't know how she came there. Yeah. How we are left. We are not consulted. So the it's a clear. strong man, a weak man who is behaving like a strong man who is hiding. And the strong, the weak person always is revengeful. It's very hateful. He wants people to be punished. He <laughs> celebrates the downfall of others. The point and is this clear. is what we are seeing. The point is clear. Final comment, uh, Mr. Um, Kawandenge. Is this man bitter? Is he angry because he's no longer part of cabinet? Or do you <laughs> agree with uh, his assessment of his own party? No, I, I think uh, in Kamenabo we have one of the few Namibians that speaks truth to power. I don't think he's bitter, because even when he was still a minister in the cabinet, he will disagree yeah. openly with his principles. Mm. And that tells you of a man that has principles. Yes. I will disagree with you, Mr. President. If you have to fire me, then do so. But I will disagree with you. So I don't think he's bitter at all. I think uh, if we only have uh, in this country uh, men and women of his caliber, yeah. this country could really go very far. Because, unfortunately, our leaders are looking for people that can worship them, yes. that can always clap hands and say, yes, you are right, Mr. President, while you know that the president is wrong. Yes. And some presidents don't take kindly to advice. Yes. And, and, and then they start finding other things. Uh, no, 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 you want to take over. You don't like me. You don't want me. But if only they can listen to reason yeah. and go back and say, but why is Karenambo saying this? and then rectify yes. that mistake, this country could have been in better hands. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kawandenge. Thank you, Mr. Kadenambo, for your time. Really appreciate it. And uh, to our viewers also for uh, staying with us in this uh, robust conversation that we are having on the agenda, the first episode of this show, will bring you more of uh, this kind of uh, uh, discourse uh, Sunday next week again, same time, and uh, subsequent Sundays. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kamanige.